Well, welcome back to our next video. This thing, as you can see, is a piece of furniture that needs a couple of legs. So one of my friends is an antique restorer, and he gave me this as a project. Well, we have two good legs. I have two are missing. He's got a little work down here to do to get it right. But my job is to make two legs that'll fit and match these. Now I know these were hand turned originally because I've calipered a lot of the dimensions on it and find that they're not exactly the same. Some of it off by more than an eighth of an inch. So that gives me some freedom <laughs> and since the other legs are going to be farther away I think I'm going to be able to do the job. Well let me tell you about how I'm going to lay this out and my plan, part of it you can already see, I have some tape on this leg right here. And the purpose of the tape, let me set this over to the side for a second. The purpose of the tape was to establish what the taper is from the top to the bottom. So I marked off every three inches of that taper length and taken a diameter measurement. I've then transferred it to the billet that I'm going to use and I'll be able to put the taper on. So let me show you what my marks are like here. I'm going to pan down here and take a look at some of these sheets that I've got. First thing I did was to take absolutely all the dimensions I had. I have a diameter of each of the features at each of its points and its length of each of the features and then the same thing for the top and the bottom. Here's my measurements for the taper. Well, that may be all I need to work from that and the actual piece itself. But also, I took a couple really nice close-up pictures. Actually, I took long-away pictures at high res, then zoomed in because if I took a close-up picture, there would be some distortion of the shape due to the way lenses work. So this is the detail of the foot that needs to be reproduced. Here's the detail of the top that needs to be reproduced. So that helps me. I can look at those close. That'll kind of help me a little bit. But the other thing I did is took these drawings, these pictures I should say, transferred them into SketchUp, scaled them down because I knew what this dimension across here actually was, and I put it into SketchUp, reduced it until it's exactly the right size. And then in SketchUp, I was able then to take actual measurements right off of the piece. Actually, I traced it, and I have a drawing and I have real measurements. Now I measured out to a thousandth. There's no way I'm going to turn to that degree of accuracy, but my calipers did that. Here's the foot. You see there's a taper on the bottom. Uh, this is the original foot that was there, but since two of them were lost, uh, my customer went out and bought four, a whole new set. Turns out to be the inside dimensions of these is exactly the same, so I have an old one here I can use to fit it to dimension. So, the process now is to go onto the lathe and actually begin to turn two legs to match the two are here, or as close as I can get. So I'm going to take it in three stages. I'm working between centers. I think the cherry billets that I have are going to be steady enough without flexing that I'll be able to turn all the detail. We'll try it. I think that's the way I'd like to work. If it was more a slender leg, I would have then chucked up the top end and use the tailstock only for support, not for pressure. So I'm going to turn the tape first on both of the legs, and then I'm going to turn the detail on the foot, and then the detail on the top, and then switch to the second leg, detail on the foot, detail on the top. So that's my plan. We'll see if that works out. Let's go to the lathe and see what we can do. We've got the first billet up on the lathe between centers as accurately as I could get it. Uh, it's not perfectly round. What's happened is this piece of uh, cherry actually is a little bit warped. The ends are running more true than the center. But I'm taking it down to a taper and that'll be okay. So I've marked out every three inches along here and what I'm going to do is take the dimensions that I have calculated off of one of the chair legs and transfer it to each of these points and then connect the dots. That'll give me the perfect taper. A piece of broad sandpaper to smooth it out and I'll be done. Uh, one of the problems. I used a really good set of calipers to do this. This reaches out to a thousandth 
uh, and it's really nice. I did it in decimal inches. The problem with that is, first of all, I didn't need to be that accurate. Second thing, because this is a good set of calipers, all these edges are very sharp so that they're very accurate. So if I put this over the turning wood while I'm taking a measurement, it's going to grab nine times out of ten. And that means I'm going to bust the calipers, probably hurt myself. So I can't use these things with the lathe running, so I'm going to turn it, turn the lathe off, take a measurement, and so on. I should have done it with this set of very inexpensive calipers that I got at uh, the local big box hardware store. The only range reads down to about a sixteenth of an inch and that's more than accurate because I've measured these legs and found that they are, well a couple of them are more than an eighth of an inch different in diameter. Another thing I could have used, and it was disappointing that I couldn't, is one of these gauges. This is one of these devices that when you press it against something, it transfers the shape. It's really neat. It doesn't help me at all because, let's take a look at one of the fingers. Those fingers are about a sixteenth of an inch thick and they're much too wide to transfer the detail I need. Plus, it just doesn't set well against this piece of round wood and then it slips and slides, so I have an inexpensive one. I'm going to go look online after I finish this project to see if I can find a much more accurate one where these fingers are thinner. I'll get one of them back up here again. Oh, well, you saw it before. One that I can unlock, press into place, and then secure, and then use it to transfer to another device. So this was a great idea, and for this particular project, it didn't work. So what I'm going to start here is the first mark is actually at the right dimension. At the three inch mark, I'm going to have to transfer a mark from here to here and on down. And then I'm going to turn that taper until those marks disappear. And that gives me the taper, a little bit of sanding, and that one's done. I put the second leg up, do it, and then go on. So I'm ready to go to work. OK, this mark's OK. First mark come down to 1.466 and that's very little off. I've recently sharpened my parting tools. This one's so close. Man, that's really warped. Okay. Next one is 1.336, 1 1.3, I know a thousandth makes a big difference, right? It's going to be a challenge. You see how warped this piece is? That's what I got to work with. Okay. That's why I said this. Part of this will go away when I uh, begin to bring it into 366, 1.229, 2. Some of this warp will disappear when I turn it around to this taper. That'll help. Okay, and then the next one is 114. 1.1 on the other side here.
job is to connect the dots. I'll just try a skew chisel initially and see what happens here. take a big wide piece of sandpaper and finish it off that way. This is 100 grit. That'll do just fine. Get the dust collector going here because this is going to create a lot of mess. First one, nice smooth taper. And guess what? I'm going to do it all over again. Let's hope this piece is straighter. Okay, here we go. First mark is supposed to be 1.543. The old is right on. Five, four, three. See how close this one's on? Oh, that's good enough. The next mark is 1466. Four, six, six, and like the other one, just a small bit off. Very small. Better use a parting tool.
Okay, two tapers done. Now, since this is in place, I'm going to work on this end down here next. So that means I'm going to come over here, and I'm actually going to go to a smaller tool rest because I don't need that big long pass. And I want to get in close. Make sure we're nice and tight. We are good. So this drawing now, taking a look at the foot section, I know that this very end down here is six tenths of an inch, and the front, the top of that is 0.7, and its length is 0.6. So let's set the length in here first. So I'm going to take and mark. So we know right that. So I'm going to work from this end back. So this is going to be six tenths down here. It's that same diameter. Get my pencil. So six tenths is about like that. That's a little proud of six tenths, and that's just fine. Uh, it's got to be 0 0.75 at the top. Six seven. It's going to be that big around at the top, and I'm going to try that with the peel cut on the skew chisel. See how close we're getting here. Oh yeah, we've got to come way down here. Yeah. This all this mass is going to go away anyway. The largest that it gets down here is 1.2. Uh, 1.2. I might as well just turn this down. Let's take it to 1.2. 1.2. See, it doesn't need to be big around that anyway. Let's just take that down. Enough. So now I've got to get this down to 0 0.6, no, 0 uh, 0.76, 756, 7, 5.6, close enough anyway. That's a long way to go. That's getting so close to the tip, I'm going to change to a different point so I have more working room in there. My problem is that I'm going to run right into my live center if I'm not careful. So let's get that live center out of there and replace it with a different one. creating a lot more working room. I 
And the hole in the bottom is not going to matter because it's going to have a brass cup over it, so it'll be just fine. So now that's right. Now point six we need to get. Uh, that's about a sixteenth more down. <laughs> Tapered part right here. So now I have a bead that is 1.137 in diameter and its length, well, heck, it's easy to measure it right there. There's my bead on that side. And then there's one inch up to the next bead, which is right here. And then we have a bead with a couple of fillets on the other side. And it's point two, one point two. This is one point eight seven. This is a little bit smaller, one point eight seven diameter. One point one eight seven. A little smaller, and the diameter in between these two is point nine three four. So what I'm going to do is take this down first to nine three four, and that's a parting tool.
top end now. So let's see what we've got here. It goes right up to the end. And what I need to know is, oh, this has the cove in it. That's nice. And the full length here is 1.1. And that's right. So we start off with a little fillet and a cove. And the cove is 0.866 deep. That's 0 0.4, 0 0.5 wide. I'm beginning to round off. I'm not going to transfer the things around that way, but I did put a little pin mark with the jaws of my caliper, which I now can transfer around. That's the cove, that's the fillet, and from it'll be fillet on both sides of that, and then this just rounds off to a bead. And that should be about 1.5 here. Okay, so let's put the fillets in first. That's a parting cut. A long way. Holes are hard to see. I've got a cut about another eighth of an inch deep almost. one leg. That way to get a chance to do it all over again. Okay, just loaded the next one in and I'm going to process it pretty much the same as I did the first one, but you know every time you do something in duplicates or triplicates you learn something each time through and I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to take this down to the dimension, the dimension, dimension of, <laughs> of the largest bead on here. And then I'm going to reduce this down and do the bottom of the foot. So I'm, I'm approaching this with a little bit different order of things, thinking perhaps that might be a little bit more efficient. So this maximum bead diameter here is 1.2. This is 1.2. And so I'm going to set this at 1.2. I'm going to take this whole thing down to 1.2 and then do the next step. Skew chisel. And it's out of round anyway, I need to take it down. To the other end, and let's go to a different drawing. If I can find it, or is it curious? Okay. So 
So here's what we've got to do up here. We have, starting at this point right here, come down a little bit and the bead starts half an inch plus six five six point two some point like point six two let's mark it my pencil find these little mark holes these little holes I put in here there's my other mark and where is the there it is right there okay so fillet, fillet, cove, and we know the cove is 0 0.866, 0 0.866, we know that. So that's how small the cove has got to be. And I think I can just eyeball this if I have a gouge. Here we go. Project that is done. So there's one more leg. Now my customer is going to have to drill a hole in here, put a dowel in it, and find a way of fastening that onto that piece of furniture. Well, I did a video earlier on the techniques of doing a um, piece of furniture, but this was really one. And frankly, this is a pretty simple piece. Just uh, three beads, a couple of fillets on either side, a cove. The only thing that's really critical is that this cove, or this uh, uh, shape right here, needs to fit that little cup that goes on there. So I want to be sure these two dimensions are as accurate as could be. It will be screwed on from the side, so it'll be fastened on with a mechanical faster. But uh, I took this piece of cherry that he gave me. It's some good wood to work with because it's solid. Um, it cuts easily. It's a fairly tight grained wood so I can get some good clean sharp detail in it. So that's the project. Come back and see our next video. Mm -hmm.